Hello everybody. Um, we're gonna be doing our lectures this way. Uh, I'm gonna be preparing some uh, slides and then I'm going to uh, discuss uh, the contents of the slides. This is supposed to be our slide last um, March 2, 2020. Um, and um, the contents of here are still uh, in algebra. Although today, uh, the exam that you took is already in trigonometry. Okay, so today we're going to be discussing problems in algebra involving coin and money problems, distance problems, mixture problems, work problems, and some quadratic equations. What we're going to do is that I'm going to discuss one item for each, and then the rest will be uh, allotted to you. What you do is you try to solve it, and then uh, tell me by a PM, or in our uh, in our teams, uh, if you got the answer or if you don't know the solution, so I can uh, discuss it to you. Okay, I will always choose item number three in all of the in all of the items. So uh, the rest will be uh, uh, will be done by you. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, first question in algebra problems that involves money. Reggie has twice as many one hundred peso bills as he has fifty peso bills and 3 more 20 peso bills than 50 peso bills. If the total amount of the bills is 600 pesos, how many 100 peso bills does he have? Well, uh, we have a rich guy here, Reggie, with, with some money. He has how many types of bills? Well, he has a 100 peso bill, he has a 50 peso bill, and he has a 20 peso bill. So let's write that down. So we have uh, Reggie. Reggie uh, uh, with uh, 20, 50, and 100 um, uh, peso bills. Peso bills. So what we're doing here is we're writing down the given. And then uh, what do we know is that he has twice as many 100 as 50 peso bills. So meaning uh, number of 100 uh Peso bills is twice the number of uh, 50 peso bills. bills. Let's write that down and then represent it later. Okay, so he has 3 more 20 than 50 peso bills. So he has uh, 3 more, 3 more 20 peso bills uh, than 50 bills and um, our last statement is that the total amount of money that he has is 600 pesos um, he has 600 pesos and the question is um, how many 100 peso bills does he have does he have how many 100 of peso bills does he have since we are going to solve this uh, using algebra, we need to represent some unknown. Um, these two uh, clues tells us that we should represent the unknown uh, for the number of peso bills because the number of 100 peso bills relies on the number of 50 peso bills and the number of 20 peso bills relies on the number of 50 peso bills. So let's, let's, let's do that. So let's represent. Uh, rep presentation um, let some unknown variable let's say r for reggie uh, be the number of 50 peso bills and then um, here here the number of 100 peso bills is twice the number 50 so this means that uh, 2r uh, is the number of 100 peso bills and because this sentence says 3 more 20 peso bills than 50 peso bills it means that r plus 3 is the number of 20 peso bills, bills. all right we now use the remaining part of our clues to figure out um, the unknown which is r okay so let's let's write an equation and how do we write an equation? We use this 
this um, statement here. He has 600 pesos. So if he has 600 pesos and has R50 peso bills and 2R100 peso bills, sorry, and R plus 3 20 peso bills, then he must have 50 times R, which is the, um, the total amount of his 50 peso bills. So 50R, 50R, um, 50R, plus this one here, he has 2R of 100 peso bills. So that's um, 100 times 2R, plus he has R plus 3, 20 peso bills. So 20 peso bills times R plus 3. That is equal to 600 pesos. So solving our our unknown gives us 50R plus, that's 200R. This one is 200R here. R plus, this is 20R plus 60. 20R plus 60. That is equal to 600. Simplifying the left hand side and then um, using addition property of equality to dispose 60 here on the left, we're going to have 270R here on the left hand side of the equation. And here on the right hand side, we're going to have 600 minus 60, which is 540. Dividing both sides by 270 gives us R is equal to 2. So this means that Reggie has 2. 50 peso bills. So, um, it means that Reggie has um, 50 peso bills. 50 peso bills. He has 2R, 2R, which is equal to 4, 100 peso bills. bills. And he has R plus 3, uh, 20 peso bills. So, that is um, R plus 3. So, that's 2 plus 3. So that's R, let's write it down. R plus 3 is equal to 2 plus 3, which is 5. 5, um, 20 peso bills. Peso bills. Okay, um, that is our, uh, that is our solution. That's our solution. That's solution, that's our solution. And our answer. Our answer to the request run that how many 100 peso bills does it have? Does he have? Well, our answer is that he has four. Uh, Reggie has four 100 uh, peso bills. Uh, peso bills. Okay, so move. Uh, checking our answer, we see that 2 times 50 is 100, 4 times 100 is 400. And 5 times 20 is 100. And so 100 plus 400 plus 100 gives us 600 pesos, which is the total amount of money that Reggie has. Okay. Let's move on to our next problem, which is a problem about distance. So here, we're asked that there are two cars leaving from the same point and traveling in opposite directions. So one is moving 10 miles uh, per hour faster than the other. After traveling for two hours, they are 160 miles apart. How fast is each car traveling? Okay, let's draw the scenario. Well, we saw that uh, we know that there are two cars. So this is a car that is traveling this way, and then there's another car traveling this way. Oh, sorry, traveling this way, the other side. So after two hours, uh, two hours, two hours later. Two hours, uh, uh, two hours. After two hours, they are now going to be 160 miles apart. So let's write that down. That's 160, 160 miles, miles, 160 miles. Okay, 160 miles. And the speed of the 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 car of this car, the other car is faster by 10 kph right so the other car the other car is 10 miles sorry not kph 10 miles faster than the other so after traveling for two hours they are 160 apart okay so let's solve that um using again our excel 
So we have uh, we have two cars. So what we know is that we have two cars uh, traveling, traveling, and in opposite directions, opposite direction, direction. Uh, one car is uh, ten miles uh, miles per hour faster than the other the other and then after two hours after two hours uh, they are um, 160 miles uh, apart and the question is um, how fast is each car traveling uh, what is the speed Sure. That's our problem. So let's uh, represent the unknown. Maybe let's uh, because one one car is faster than the other. Then this uh, clue here tells us that um, we can represent the the speed of the slower car. So let uh, let's represent. Let's use R for representation. Uh, let uh, S be the speed of the slower car. Car. And one is 10 miles per hour faster than the other, so that's s plus 10. Uh, is the speed of the faster car? Faster car. Uh, what we know is that um, the distance covered after two hours here, and the distance covered after two hours of the other car here, added together is 160 miles. So recall. Recall that we have distance is equal to rate times time. So, um, because they traveled for two hours, we can now uh, form our equation that the distance uh, distance traveled by the slower car slower car plus uh, distance traveled traveled by the faster car is equal to 160 miles. Okay, so we're going to have our equation then, uh, there. So to solve the problem, um, we're going to get the the, the distance of uh, of the traveled by the slower car. So we multiply the rate and the time, and rate here is the speed. So s times the time, which is two two hours, so two s. Plus, here on the other side, we multiply by 2 the speed of the other. So that's 2 times s plus n. And together, the answer is 116 miles. So we are now left to solving for s. So solving for s, we get 2s on the right side. Then distribute, that's 2s plus 20. Plus 20, that is equal to 160. Okay, solving for s, we get 4s is equal to 160 minus 20, which is 140. 140. Okay, divide both sides by 4. We get S is equal to 140 over 4 is 35. Oops, S is equal to 35. Okay, so our conclusion is that uh, the speed of the, or our answer here is that um, the speed of the slower car is 35 miles per hour while the other, the faster car, is 45 miles per hour. Okay, checking uh, our answer. After two hours, the slower car has traveled 32 ta 35 times 2, which is 70. And after two hours, the faster car has traveled 45 times 2, which is 90. And 70 plus 90 is 160. So we know that our answer is correct. Okay, next. We now discuss mixture, mixture problems. And our problem is uh, goes like this. How many pounds of cashew nuts costing 5 US dollars a pound must be mixed with peanuts costing 2.20 US dollars a pound to get 20 pounds of nuts worth 3 uh, 
and 18 cents US dollars. Okay. So we're going to be selling uh, nuts now. So let's write down uh, what we know. So we know that um, the cost of a cashew is 5 USD per pound. So cost of cashew, cashew is 5 uh, USD per pound. And then the cost of peanuts is 2.20. Meanwhile, peanuts uh, cost 2.20, 2.2 per pound. Per pound. Okay. So, what do we know? We need to make a mixture of 20 pounds. So, we need to make make a mixture mixture of 20 pounds of cashews and peanuts so that so it costs uh, how much does it cost 3.18 per pound 3.18 per pound so that's 3.18 US dollars per pound okay USD per pound okay so that's that's the problem and uh, yeah, so we must mix cashew and peanuts to get a 20 pound of nuts worth uh, 3, uh, 3.18 US dollars. Alright, okay. So, um, because we are mixing, so this is what's going to happen. Uh, let's uh, undo everything. Allow me to select and delete everything. Okay, so because we're mixing, so this is your, um, let's say, peanuts. We're going to mix it with um, some cashew, and the result is that we are going to have uh, a mixture. These are your cashews, these are your peanuts, and this is the cashew peanuts. Okay. Now, if this is 20, 20 pounds, then the sum of the number of pounds here and here must be 20, right? So meaning, during the representation, we can just represent one. And then we can figure out how many uh, pounds are there here. So it's just going to be uh, whatever this representation, 20 minus whatever this representation here. Right? Okay. So that's how we're going to do it. So, so let's represent. Suppose um, C, C is the number of pounds. Uh, pounds of uh, cashew uh, in the mixture in the mixture and then we must have 20 minus C must is the number of pounds of peanuts in the mixture okay so in the equation we are going to um, use this two information we know that in the mixture, um, the cost of C pounds of cashew is 5 times C. So we're going to have 5C plus, and the cost, <coughs> excuse me, of um, 20 minus C pounds of peanuts is going to be 2.2. So that's 2.2 times 20 minus C. Minus C. C and that is equal to that is equal to um, a mixture of 20 nuts a mixture sorry a mixture of 20 nuts cost uh, of 20 pounds of cashew peanuts whose cost is 3.18 per pound so that is equal to 3.18 of 20 all right so we now solve uh, this uh, equation so solving for this equation, we get, um, what do we get? We get 5C plus, what is 2.2 of 20? Well, that is just 4, 4, uh, 4 44, right? Minus 2.2C. And that is equal to, what is uh, 3.18 of 20? Well, that is just 63.6, right? 
not 6. Okay, uh, let's check our multiplication if it's correct. That's just, um, yeah, this is 5c and this is 2.2 times 20, that's 44. And then 2.2 uh, times c is just 2.2.c, correct. Okay, and then this is um, 63.6, correct. Okay. Okay, so we now solve for C. So we have 5C minus 2.2C gives us 2.8C. And then on the other side, we are going to subtract um, 40, uh, 44 from 63. That will give us 19.4. Um, sorry, nine, yeah, 19.4. Oh, no. Um, we're going to have 19.6. Right, 19.6, 0.6. Okay, so uh, dividing, dividing our our given gives us uh, C is equal to seven. So therefore, uh, the number of cashews is seven, and twenty minus C is equal to thirteen. Okay, so our answer. Um, how many uh, pounds of uh, of cashew, um, no, there will be seven pounds of cashew, cashew, cashew. While uh, thirteen, uh, there will be well, there will be uh, thirteen pounds of uh, peanuts in the mixture. Okay, uh, checking our answer. We see that if we multiply uh, 7 by 5, we get a 35, right? And then uh, multiply um, 13 times 2.2, uh, we get um, 28.6. And that's 35 plus 28.6 gives us 63. So we know that our answer is correct. Okay, so let's now solve uh, some work problem. This time, it's a work problem. So, a swimming pool can be filled in 6 hours and drained in 15 hours. How long will it take to fill the pool if the owner has forgotten to close the drain, drain valve? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> we have a pool and it can be filled in by 6 hours. But it takes... Uh, a much longer time to remove the water from the pool it's 15 hours so the problem is that um, how long will you be able to fill the pool uh, if the drain valve is closed is, um, is is open so meaning while the water is getting in some of the water is also getting out luckily uh, it takes longer to uh, to drain the water in the pool so it it is still possible to fill the pool even though the water is spilling out because it's it's faster it's faster to do it so it's a work problem so work recall that work is just uh, the product of rate times the time meaning the amount of work uh, done by something is just the 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 rate at which that object is working and then the number of times that object work okay so this is we have a pool uh, can be filled in six hours and can be drained drained in 15 hours 15 hours so meaning meaning um, to fill to fill the the rate the rate, the rate, uh, rate. Uh, let's write work rate and time here. To fill uh, one pool, you need um, six hours, and so the rate of filling is one over six. Okay, so that's one over six. Uh, okay, and then for the draining, to drain the work is one. You need to drain one pool. And the number of times and the number of hours you can do this is 15. And so the rate for draining is 1 over 15. 
now the question is that um, uh, we wanted to know how long uh, how long will it take uh, to fill the pool the pool if the drain is open okay so we represent uh, we represent h for the number of hours hours uh, that will take to fill the pool Okay, <clears throat> now our equation is like this: the fill the fill rate is working, and the drain rate is also working for each hours, and so our equation will be like this: one over six of h times h, so one over six h of h. Um, I will put uh, an o h plus 1 over 15 of h is equal to 1 uh, one pool so that is this is going to be our equation so solving for solving for this um, we have the lcd of 6 and uh, 6 and 15 is 30 and so we can multiply both sides by 30 so if we multiply this by 30 we're going to have 5h here plus 6 uh, plus um, 2h on the other side and we're going to have uh, equals to um, 30 and solving for h we have 7h is equal to 30 and so h is equal to 30 over 7 over 7 okay so our answer is that it will take it will take 30 over 7 30 over 7 hours hours to fill the pool uh, okay let's check our lcd is our lcd 30 yes yeah 30 divided by 6 that's 5 5 times ah wait this is not supposed to be addition this is supposed to be subtraction because whenever the water this this fill is working so this this part here is working the rate is one six and the time is unknown h so therefore the work done is here but this guy here is um, removing water so it must be minus so let's subtract that by negative uh, minus one right and now we're going to have um, um, 3 this is gonna be 3 right <clears throat> and our answer should be 10 uh, note that um, I noticed that I made a mistake because 30 over 7 hours is just less than uh, about mo more than 4 just more than 4 hours so <laughs> it will be faster to fill the pool while the drain is open of course that's, that's impossible so uh, I, I noticed that, that my answer there is wrong so it will take uh, 10 hours 10 hours to fill the pool fill the pool let's look back and check if our answer is correct so 10 hours of 1 6 will give will will give us 10 hours times 1 6 will give us 10 over 6 on the other hand 10 hours of 1 over 15 will give us 10 over 15 okay simplifying these uh, two we get an LCD of 30 right LCD of 30 and then um, we will add um, 3 and 2 3 and sorry um, 30 30 that's 5 5 times uh, 10 it's supposed to be subtraction um, 30 5 times 10 is 50 so we're going to have 50 here minus um, 30 divided by 15 is 2, 2 times 20 is 20. And we have uh, equals to 1. And so our answer is correct. One pool will be filled. Okay. Okay. So our last set of problem 
is uh, on uh, quadratic equations and uh, as I mentioned earlier we'll be solving the third one okay so let's uh, solve that quadratic equation okay so one number is 3 more than another number if the square of the smaller number is 19 more than 3 times the larger number find the numbers so there are two numbers so two numbers uh, one number is 3 more than another so one number is three more than another. And then the next one, the next statement says that if the square of the smaller is 19 more than three times the larger, the square of the smaller is 19 more than three times the larger. And the question is that find the numbers find the numbers okay so let's represent okay so there is a smaller number so let's begin with the smaller number right so the smaller number is um let's say s so let s be the smaller number and because uh, the smaller the, the larger number is three more than the smaller then the larger number must be s plus three is the larger number. Okay. Um, we can get our equation from here. The, the square of the smaller. The square of the smaller is equal to oh, is, yeah, is, is 19 more than 3 times the larger. So 3 times the larger, which is s plus 3, plus 19. So 19 more. So we see the square of the smaller here is 19 more than 3 times the larger. Okay, so we now solve that equation. Uh, we are going to have uh, s squared is equal to 3s plus 9, 3s plus 9, 9 plus 19. Okay, so we are going to have s squared um, equals 3s plus 28. And then simplifying, we're going to have s squared. Let's put everything on the other side. Minus 3s minus 28 is equal to 0 since this is a quadratic. And so this um, quadratic equation is factorable. And the factor is s minus 7 times s plus 4 equals to 0. The 0 property tells us that s is equal to 7 or s is equal to negative 4. So let's see um, let's see uh, which one will give the correct answer. So suppose uh, s is equal to 7. So if s is equal to 7 then the larger larger is um, s plus 3 which is equal to 10. Now let's check the, the square so 7 squared. 7 squared is 49. Meanwhile, 3 times 10 is 30, and 30 plus 19 is 49. So 3 uh, times 10 plus 19 is 49. So therefore, s equals 7 is correct. Is correct. Now let's check s is equal to 4. So suppose uh, s is equal to 4. So the larger, oh, sorry, negative 4. The larger, negative 4. The larger is plus 3. The larger is s plus 3, which is equal to uh, negative 1. And let's check negative uh, 4. 4 squared is equal to 16. Meanwhile, ooh, negative 3 times negative 1 uh, plus 19 is also 16. So meaning both answer is correct. So S is also equal to negative 4 is also, also correct. And so our conclusion, our conclusion, uh, or our answer is that 
the two numbers numbers could be could be uh, 7 and 10 or negative 4 negative 4 and negative 1 okay so uh, try out the other numbers um, try out the other numbers and let me know in the comments or let me know in our teams um, if you um, and were a was able to answer were able to answer them and let me know if there's an item that you want me to solve all right so thank you very much